Welcome back. He's one of Australia's most popular and respected race callers. And today he's brought the 2016 Emirates Melbourne Cup to the cafe, which we are very grateful for. Please welcome racing personality Brian Martin. Hey, good. So good to have you with us, Brian. What a fantastic career. Number, what are you up to when it comes to calling the Melbourne Cup? 26 down, coming up to number 27, which is, uh, you know, you sort of get nervous about it 100 days out from the Melbourne Cup. It's, uh, it's such a great moment uh, in sport, not just in racing, but in sport. And um, to sort of look back and look at those marvellous times of Maccabi Diva winning three in a row, 2003, 2004, 2005. And I don't think anything will top what happened last year right. with Prince of Penzance and Michelle Payne. Mm. Uh, first female in 155 years. Uh, New Zealand bred, of course, at yes. Mata Mata. Um, so it's, it's a special race. You know, yeah. the, the Japanese have come out and won it. The uh, French have won it. The Germans have won it. The Irish have won it. And it's pretty hard to keep it back in Australia, but you Kiwis, you're, you know, you're great at rugby, but you're very good. You've won 42 of them so far. That's not oh, you're bad. used to that in Australia with us, aren't you? Well, we still claim far, that. Oh, of course, no, but he's out. Timaru, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he was born there, but he sort of did his racing out of there. Um, look, you've got a delicious voice, I'd like to tell you. Oh, thank you. Um, how did you get into it? Um, I can remember at school, sort of nine and ten years of age, having the kids run around the Oval at lunchtime, and I'd change their names to horses. <laughs> I bet you the girls are stoked about that. Yeah, there was a guy next to me called Bill Farrell, but he was Tullock at lunchtime. <laughs> and uh, they'd run around the Oval and, and I'd call them uh, as horses. And, uh, yeah, it was just it was something I, I remember way, way back when Evening Peel won the Melbourne Cup in 1956, and I was six, and listening to, the, to the, the, the call coming out of the little Baker Light box, the little radio in the lounge room at home, and, and I heard this call coming, and I thought, my God, where's that coming from? Where's the little man behind the, in the back of the radio? And I thought, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Uh, and what a fantastic journey it's given you. Yeah. You know, yeah. And now here yeah. you are, and with that Emirates Cup, that you get to take it around on tour. I want to talk about the cup because I've noticed there's three handles. Why are there three handles? Well, it's the, it's the loving cup, but it represents the owner, the mm -hmm. trainer and the jockey. OK, cool. The, so, yeah, it's a partnership. Yeah, well, yeah oh. it is. And it's, it's part of folklore and it's... You look at that trophy, it's magnificent. Mm. It's 18 karat gold. It's created, a new cup is created each and every year. Yeah. There's no, no, you know, change on, carry on type of thing. Well, so who gets to keep the cup then? Because, you the know, it's a partnership. Yeah, yeah, right. well, well, the owners have to decide if there's, you know, husband and wife, they get it. If there's 50 owners, which has happened, you know, with syndicates, I don't know what they do then, but they all drink champagne out of it <laughs> once the presentation's yep. made. We look after it. It, it travels the world. Um, this is the 14th uh, tour that we've uh, taken the Melbourne Cup on. It's been to 330 destinations over the 13 years so far. It's travelled 460,000 kilometres around wow. the world. Wow. It's going back to Australia uh, this weekend, uh, to different parts of Australia, then it'll go to China in August. So, and you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Do you tell your friends and wife that you're actually working when you're taking this? I mean, this is pretty much an amazing job, isn't it? Well, it's a big team that travels with it, you know. We've got a, we've got a great support crew, but it's, um, it's something we're so proud of. Mm. And no matter where you go, whether it be a, a retirement village, a kindergarten, a home, a sports club, a pub, it doesn't matter where you go, the aura and the magnetism of this trophy particularly through Australia and through New Zealand, because we come here nearly every year, is extraordinary. Just extraordinary. What are the rules? I notice oh, people yeah. haven't been touching it, they've been wearing gloves. Is that a rule? Yes, it is, until the presentation, and then whoever wins the cup, it's yours. Right. Uh, gloves come off. And, well, and what's it worth? Uh, New Zealand dollars, 185000 Wow. 18 karat gold. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, a lot of trainers, Gay uh, Waterhouse, for instance, will not hold that cup before the race. Like, you know, that it's superstitious. Right. Has, a lot of people are like that. Has Don't anybody who won it lost it? I'm sure down through the years. I think it might have been melted <laughs> down back, back through the 30s. Yeah, yeah. It might have, uh, you know, gone for a wander, but um, it just grows in stature. And as I say, Prince of Penzance and that, that fairy tale finish of Michelle Payne, her brother Stevie is the strapper. Uh, that whole, it just resonated globally. And, just, and, and the legend lives on. That's the beauty of this race. Yeah, we're so lucky to have it in here too. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's Great our pleasure. sporting event. Thanks so much for coming, Imra. Pleasure, guys. OK, the Emirates Melbourne Cup Tour is in Parson North today and then in the Hawke's Bay on Saturday. So now over to Holly. Yeah, I got my very own Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Look, it's pure gold. <laughs> <laughs>